The movie opens by showing an empty school. The scene goes through its empty hallways, classrooms, library, bathrooms, and such. Jane is walking to school. She checks her phone, and she sees a no-service warning when she gets to the bench at the schoolyard. She hears the school bell ring, so she starts to run. The other students are going to their lockers before attending class. Eric's locker is filled with food and a note that says he is a man. Then the scene shows Nadia. Her locker is mainly orange, she loves sports. She has a poster that has Stop Crying written on it, and a small board with the number 15. Ellis Locker has a lot of pictures, and a poster saying that there is no government like no government. He seems to like the color green. Lastly, Merritt has a picture of two little girls in her locker. She likes holograms. She has hologram sunglasses, a hologram bag, shoes, and sparkly purple earrings with chalker. Eric takes food from his locker and eats it. Nadia takes gum, Ellis takes his camera, which has green straps, and Merritt takes a lollipop before they close their lockers. Jane walks in, sees them, and stops. Merritt stops the others and comes to talk to her. She notices a leaf in her head and asks if she has been going to the forest again. She tells Jane that she needs to pull her hair back and find a mirror. She notices the dirt on Jane's back and tells it to her. The school bell rings again. Then she stops her from trying to look at it and tells her that she can't stay like that and they leave. Later, they are in class. The teacher hands them their tests back. Jane gets the highest score, 96. Merritt asks the teacher, Mr. Onsbach, if they can get a retake. He responds by saying that the questions were from the reading, like the last one, while he writes a problem on the chalkboard. She complains and says that no one knew what they were doing in the last one, and she thinks that they deserve a retake. Mr. Onsbach asks the class if anyone wants to try solving the problem on the board. No one volunteers, and he asks Jane if she can do it. Jane hesitates at first, and Merritt tries to tell her no with her eyes. Jane goes to the board and solves the question. She then turns around and smiles at the class while Ellis takes her picture. The teacher says there won't be a retake since Jane could solve the problem. The class resists, and the teacher starts to tell a story about a poor-looking woman with a fiddle. She goes to ask for food and a place to stay for a working family. They ask her who she is and what is she doing there. She says she's a fiddler and she plays it in the summer. They reject her, but she says she deserves some food. The family doesn't help her, and she doesn't live long to play the other summer. The class looks confused when the story ends, and Mr. Onspach says that he thinks the family had it wrong. They should have taken the woman's fiddle and cracked it over her head. He then turns to Merritt and tells her not to tell him what they deserve. He turns around and tells them to open their books as if nothing happened. The class ends. The students are walking in the hallway while workers are installing cameras and carry glass. There are posters advertising security on the walls. Jane goes to her locker. Inside it, there are mirrors, drawings, and the same picture of the two little girls with many other pictures of her with Merritt. She reaches down to put her notebook in her backpack, and she sees Mr. Onspach in the reflection of the mirror when she gets up. She gets scared, and he apologizes for scaring her. He asks her how she is, and talks with her. He gets closer to her, and puts his hand on her shoulder saying that she doesn't have to be ashamed of her talent, then he leaves. Meanwhile Merritt is watching them in the hallway. Then the scene shifts to Jane and Merritt talking in the parking lot. Merritt asks Jane if she likes Mr. Onspach, and she says no. Merritt asks why else she would show off like that in the class. Jane tries to say that he was pressuring her to solve the question, but Merritt stops her saying Jane like that. Merritt tells Jane that he has a heart for her, and that she can make him do anything. She asks her to talk to him about doing the retake, saying her mom's going to be mad at her if she sees her score. Jane agrees to speak with him, and they say that they love each other. Merritt stops and tells her to never make her look like an idiot again. Later, the students are in the school's sports saloon with Ms. Rakowski. They are trying to do pull-ups, and a guy named Brody becomes the most successful one. While waiting, Ellis says he wonders what's in Ms. Rakowska's mug, and Merritt tells him it's alcohol. She tells him there are eight bottles of alcohol in her drawer, and he says they need to raid that stash on Friday night. Then they are talking in pottery class. Nadia asks Jane if she's been blowing Mr. Onspach, and everyone silently looks at her. Merritt says no, and Nadia says maybe she should. Everyone keeps staring at her, and she shouts what while slamming the clay on the table. Then the scene transmissions into a lab, and the students are dissecting a brain. Ellis asks Nadia if she cares about her grades, and Nadia tells him it affects the game on Friday. Nadia turns to Jane and says if she can't play on Friday because of math, she will microwave her. Later, they are sitting in the common hall, and Jane tries to tell them that she didn't study or did the reading, but no one listens to her. Ellis says it's fine, and tells that they should start thinking about more important things like how they will raid Ms. Rakowska's stash. He asks them if they agree to do it after the game on Friday, and they agree. Jane says what about the cameras? And they start thinking about how they are going to get around the security cameras that are in every single corner. They go into the library, and Jane says that they can hack the cameras. Ellis asks if she can do it, and Jane says she only knows the theory, but that she can do it. Mr. Onspach stands behind and watches them. The school bell rings, and they announce the new security system, saying it will activate in 20 minutes. Jane listens to it, and turns around to go to Mr. Onspach's class. She doesn't see him there, so she starts to look around his desk while waiting for him. She looks at the school mascot, and laughs. Mr. Onspach comes, and closes the door. He goes to lower the blinds and he sees Nadia, Eric, Ellis, and Merritt sitting. Meanwhile, she asks him about the reading, but he doesn't answer. Instead, he asks her if she ever feels like she's living at the wrong time. He then tells her that he always thought he should be on the frontier, 
back when the railroads were being built, when there were no plastics, no screens, and no Wi-Fi, like their mascot. She says she finds the mascot silly. He tells her that it's odd to him that she didn't get 100 instead of 96. She tells him that there has been a lot to study, and he asks her how long she studied while he seems to get angrier. She tries to answer, but he tells her not to lie and that he sees what she does in his classes, not listening, not taking notes and he asks if it is because of her friends. He gets closer to her and tells Jane that he told her to not be ashamed of her talent. She says she's not ashamed and she takes notes. But he takes her backpack and starts to look for her notebook while causing her pens to drop on the floor. He finds her notebook and goes through the pages. He sees drawings and gets even angrier at her. Jane says she's already doing better than everybody else, and he yells at her saying that the rest of the students are a bunch of morons. He gets close to her and says that there are two kinds of people, fiddler people and hammer people. He says that the fiddle people don't do anything, and they just take from the hammer people. They use them for making things. He tells Jane that it's his job to make her take up the hammer. But all she does is hang out with the fiddlers, trying to get them to like her, and he tells her that it's pathetic. Jane comes out of the classroom, looking shaken and terrified. She goes out to the yard and screams. Then she calls Merritt. In the next scene, they are waiting in front of the principal's office. Jane tells Merritt that she doesn't want to make a big deal, she just wants to tell him what happened, and maybe he'll talk to Mr. Onspatch and that's it. Merritt tells her to chill, and they get called into the office. Jane tries to explain what happened to the principal. She tells him that this isn't the first time she felt uncomfortable around Mr. Onspatch and this time she tells that he did more. He reached out and shook her, but the principal doesn't listen to her properly, and he twists her words. Merritt steps in and threatens him. Then he tells Jane to tell her story again, and listens to her this time. Mr. Onspatch is in his class, looking at the blue pen that fell from Jane's bag while someone knocks on the door and calls his name. Then the scene shifts to the game. Nadia is playing on the field while Ellis, Eric, Merritt, and Jane watch it on the side. There is a security advertisement on the side of the field. A man brings out the glass they used in school, and the mascot tries to break it with his hammer, but he is unsuccessful. Jane asks Merritt what if Mr. Onspatch does something. They talk, and Merritt tells her that she won't ever see him again. Their team loses. The players come to the side while Jane thinks that the mascot is looking at her, and she gets stressed. The mascot takes off his head, and it's Brody. Jane gets relieved. They get inside the school after everyone leaves, to get Ms. Rakowska's alcohol stash, and the door locks behind them because of the security system. Jane goes to the camera room while the others go to the teacher's room to look for the bottle. There is a man walking in the hallway while she tries to fix the cables under the table. She hacks in and turns off all the cameras. The others look around to find only one bottle with a note saying 7 for me 1 for you Brody and Brody is in his car with the bottle. Jane finds them in the common hall partying and joins them. They play games and dance with each other. Then they sit on the ground and ask questions. Merritt asks who they would kill for the lowest amount. Everyone says a name except Jane. Jane says that she thinks there's always a peaceful way. And Nadia tells her she would if they had done enough to her, but she says she wouldn't because she would feel guilty. Nadia asks her what she had done to feel guilty, but she doesn't answer and looks at Merritt instead. They eventually let go of this topic, and they go to the pool. Jane and Merritt talk on the side while the others are swimming. They argue and Merritt gets up, and she leaves. She gets in the water next to Ellis, who's looking at Jane. She tries to talk to him, but he says that they only hooked up twice, and it means nothing. This upsets Merritt, and she tells him that Mr. Onspatch assaulted Jane, and they fired him. She says that she probably isn't ready to get with anyone yet. He tells Merritt that she's a horrible friend, and she gets out of the pool in frustration. Nadia tries to kiss Eric, but he backs up and starts to throw up. He gets out and goes to the bathroom. While he's hunched over the toilet seat, the mascot comes up behind him, and it hits him with the hammer. Meanwhile everyone get out of the pool, getting dressed, and Nadia says she'll go and look if Eric is okay. She gets to the bathroom and calls his name, but he doesn't answer. She finds his deceased body, covered in blood. The others come to look for them, and they see Nadia on the ground. They ask her where he is and what happened, but she doesn't answer. Ellis goes to look and comes back terrified. He tries to call someone, but he sees that there is no service. He says that they need to get out of there, and whoever did this might still be in the school. They start to fight with each other, and Jane tries to activate the fire alarm, but that doesn't work. They get out and go to the front door and see that it's locked. Then they hear a noise, and they go to the wood workshop, they lock the door. Nada tries to break the glass, but she can't succeed. They try to think of ways to get out of there, but they can't find any. Nadia says that she would rather go out and beat him up than stay there and wait. She tells the others to pick up a weapon and follow her. Eventually, they all agree and get out to the hallway. They try all the doors they come across, but they are all locked. Nadia goes to the kitchen, looks around, and sees a shadow. She slowly approaches it, but finds out that's just some clothes on a hanger. She returns to the others, and her phone dies. Jane goes to her locker to get a flashlight, and finds a note saying to take notes this time. She takes it with her, and shows it to Merritt saying the mascot might be Mr. Onspatch. She tells Jane that she doesn't care who it is, and she says that she just wants to leave. They go out to the hallway, and music starts to play. Nadia yells saying she is sick of this. The mascot is behind them. He starts to come towards them while he closes the iron gate in the middle of the hallway. They start running, but Merritt falls, and hurts her ankle. They all get out instead of Nadia. She turns around, and tries to attack him saying he killed Eric, but the mascot hits her with the hammer, and kills her. Jane tells Ellis to run to the door 
and they try to open it while Merritt yells at them to not leave her there. The mascot opens the iron gate, and they go back to get Merritt and carry her to a class. Jane and Ellis barricade the door, but the mascot is already inside. He goes to hide in the darkroom while they barricade the second door, locking themselves inside with the mascot. Ellis is in the darkroom, and Jane talking with Merritt in class. She asks her if her ankle hurts, and she tells her it's fine. Jane says she thinks about that camping trip all the time. Merritt looks at her, and Jane continues saying it's like she can see them and her mother altogether. She says she wishes they can go back there. Merritt's eyes get filled with tears, and she tells Jane to stop. Jane nods, gets up, and goes to the darkroom where the mascot is hiding. She starts crying, and Ellis comes in. She tells him to go away. But he doesn't and tells her to look up. She sees her picture, the one Ellis took when she was standing in front of the chalkboard. They start talking and the mascot slowly comes out. He hits Ellis' head with the hammer right when they were about to kiss. She yells and the mascot says her name. She stabs him with the screwdriver and runs out, covered in blood. She takes out the barricade, helps Merritt stand up, and they start running from the mascot while Merritt keeps asking where Ellis is. They go to the library. Jane makes Merritt sit down and goes to the railings. Merritt gets up and starts to walk toward Jane, asking her questions but she doesn't answer anyone. Merritt blames Jane for all of this, and they start fighting. Merritt says that Jane liked it when Mr. Onspatch touched her, and she stole the only guy she ever liked. They continue to fight, and Jane tells her that she is the one who wanted to go to the principal. Merritt says she got her friends, play dates, protected her, stood up for her, and cleaned her clothes but she got to be the little genius. She continues, and tells her mom's words of her comparing Merritt to Jane, and saying she is not enough. But Merritt tells her that it doesn't matter because she's pretty and rich, and Jane is not better than her. Jane tells her to stop, but Merritt keeps going on, and getting closer to her. She tells Jane that she's pathetic, and Jane starts to push her over and over while saying shut up. Merritt falls off from the railings. Jane looks after her in shock, and sees a shadow when she lifts her head. Jane goes to Mr. Onspatch's class, and sees him sitting in his chair with the hammer behind him. He acts as if nothing happened, and offers her some snacks. She asks him what he wants. Mr. Onspatch thought that their last talk was enough, but she needed something more, so that's what he gave her. Jane responds by saying she didn't need anything from him. He gets up, and asks how she felt when she pushed Merritt, and he tells her that she couldn't have done that before because they held her back. Anyone could see that except her, but tonight that changed, and she outlasted every single one of those fiddlers, and she picked up the hammer. Now she will accomplish every single piece of work he knows she's capable of, and that she was born to do, because she is special. He gets up from the table saying he almost forgot something, and looks around at his desk. He takes out the blue coloring pencil, and says that he kept it for her. He says he will give it back if she thanks him. Jane does approach him, and says that she has learned one thing, and that is she is not pathetic. Then she stabs him in the eye with the pencil, and gets the keys on the table. He catches her, and stabs the pencil in her leg, but she kicks him while he is trying to get up, and runs to the door. She manages to open it, and runs out to the yard. She goes next to the bank where there is a service, and Mr. Onspatch comes behind her, and attacks her when she was about to call 911. He throws her phone to the ground, and crushes it. Jane punches him from his wound, and manages to run away into the woods. She climbs up a tree, and hears him walking, looking for her while whistling. She jumps on top of him, and tackles him to the ground. She gets up, takes his hammer, and starts hitting him over and over again. Brody wakes up in his car, and look in the side mirror. He gets shocked, and looks out of his window to see clearly. There is a man on his morning run, and an old man, looking together at Jane, who is walking in the middle of the road. She is covered in blood, and carrying the hammer with her. 